Welcome to another episode of TVC News. I'm Kelsey Kinney. Later today, we'll have an interview with SGA presidential candidate Christian Powers. But first, UT's first ever sex week is coming up April 7th through the 12th, and it has gained national attention. The week-long event is paid for in part by student fees and money given from several departments who see a common interest in the planned events. In response, however, Tennessee State Senator Stacey Campfield has made a motion to, quote, unpass the university's 2013 budget. Both Metro Pulse and Cosmopolitan Magazine have expressed their support for Sex Week at UT. Co-founder Brianna Rader hopes for people to show up before casting judgments. Online publication and they wrote a story that was largely untrue. Um, we're not having lesbian bondage at our event. Our budget is not over $20,000, et cetera, et cetera. So then Fox News wrote another article on, based on that article. I swear all they really did was like coffee and paste and add some quotes for me in there. Um, but basically they sensationalized the event and reported some like largely unfalse um, statements. Website sexweekut.org and look at our about section. If you read that, you will, I promise you, you're not going to like be offended or think that we're not providing all the points of view. I, there is something in our event for everyone, whether you're very conservative or very liberal. We have things on virginity and religion, and we have things for the LGBT community, and we have like 30 events in between that. Sex Week kicks off on April 7th. More information and a full schedule are available at sexweekutk.org. Over the past three years at UT, one thing that hasn't gone unnoticed is the constant increase in tuition. Each year, SGA has been looking for ways to prevent these increases by implementing a new plan. Kana Gordon has the story. As a business student at the University of Tennessee, senior Taylor Roper is no stranger to crunching numbers. And that's why higher tuition year after year has left Roper frustrated about her dwindling bank account. The increase is a little overzealous. I don't feel like it's, I mean, I feel like I'm glad I have the opportunities I have here, but I don't feel like I should have to pay as much as I pay. The tuition spike hit students for the first time in the 2009-2010 school year with a 9% increase, again with 9% the following year, and yet again this past school year with another 8%. I want to say my freshman year, um, I guess because it was fresh, I remember the numbers, I paid about 28000 um, a year. And then now this year, um, we pay, a little, I think, a little over 40000 is what my dad said. The university has stated that the tuition increases are a necessity to keep UT a competitive university. Um, obviously, costs related to continuing to be able to offer the same quality education and better the quality of that education. The Big Orange Big Ideas rebranding campaign, which aims to catapult the university into the top 25 public universities ranking, is also a factor in the tuition increases. Although scholarships are available to some students to help counterbalance rising tuition, current SGA president Adam Roddy is pushing for tuition stability for all students. Roddy is urging a four-year locked tuition rate, a platform he pressed at last year's SGA debate. Simply having for four years upon admittance to this university, you're going to know what your tuition is. You're not going to hit with a last-minute increase your senior year that you can't afford. With this proposed locked tuition rate and a combination of grants and scholarships, it is possible to counteract the rise in tuition. But students like Taylor are hoping to see tuition hit a plateau soon. Yeah, sooner rather than later. <laughs> the four-year locked tuition plan of SGA is still in its beginning stages, but will hopefully help UT students out in the near future. The current SGA administration is wrapping up its year. April 2nd will be this term's final Senate meeting. Senate has taken new measures to ensure efficiency, such as a clicker voting system and assistance with writing bills. SGA Vice President Terry Nowell said the bills represented this year were of substantial quality and about 25 passed. The bills that have been presented because the majority of them were really well written and that's something that uh, uh, I think is rare and unique to our Senate because in the past you'll have a lot of bills that are tiny minute things that are being mentioned in these but this year there are a lot of big ones um, and a lot of ones that are actually coming from different committees uh, of student services and have a lot of research and a lot of advocacy already set up behind them. Nowell's advice for next year's Student Government Association is for the elected leaders to be diligent in their communicating SGA's workings to the students and to administration. And speaking of next year's SGA, 
2013s are approaching the home stretch here at UT. Jackie Del Pilar has the scoop. SGA campaigns are in full swing at Tennessee, but this year voters have more options. The 2013 election features three political parties running instead of the traditional two. It's kind of been a self-imposed tradition in the sense that every year we just end up with two political parties. You have six candidates running for these three spots. Um, so it's, it's nice. I think it's going to drive a lot of new voter turnout that we haven't had in the past because we do have that extra group running. Amplify, Engage, and Baker Atchley are all campaigning to represent the student body in this upcoming year. SGA hopes more parties will increase voter turnout and campus involvement. Um, and so it's nice because we're getting a little bit of diversity in terms of um, their campus experience, their professional experience, rather than just the cookie cutter um, straight from freshman council to senate to these top three positions. Despite the increase in political parties, many students are still uninformed about the election as well as SGA in general. Um, I don't know when it happens. I don't know exactly how it works. So. Yeah, I'm not very educated in the SGA campaign. I've heard of two. I'm not sure if there's any more than that, but I've, that's, I've heard of two. So. I don't really know that much about it. I just know <laughs> that they visited our sorority meetings. Each party has specific policy points they hope to implement in the upcoming year. And although they may differ in goals, one thing remains, their volunteer pride. They're all passionate about UT. Um, that's why they kind of chose to break the mold from two campaigns. and. and TVC will host UT's first live SGA debate featuring all three campaigns. The debates will be held on Tuesday, April 2nd at 8 p.m. in the Baker Center. Students and audience members can tweet their questions to the Twitter handle SGA Debate or submit them anonymously to SGA Debate 2013 at gmail.com. Students are encouraged to be informed before voting, which begins Wednesday, April 3rd. And one of those SGA campaigns is Baker Ashley. True to their motto, Feels Like 98, they hosted a Throwback Thursday event last week in the Hume's basement. The night consisted of cereal, 90s cartoons, and Nintendo 64. Sophomore Kelsey Wood was in attendance and said the event confirmed what she already loves about candidates Jake Baker and Paige Ashley. Well, I've been excited about their campaign from the first time I heard it, but I really think tonight she's really honed in on to get to know them as people and not as like candidates, and it's made me want to vote for them even more. Keeping with the breakfast food trend, the Engage campaign hosted a night of pancakes for students last week. I was there to check out the candidates and the food. Engage candidates Christian Powers, Laura Bergen, and Grant Davis have proven their ability to campaign for the SGA election. Last Thursday, though, they proved another strength, their cooking skills. It was Engage Pancake Night in Clement Hall, where potential student voters came out to hear the candidates speak and to enjoy some late night pancakes. Freshman Mark Bergen is an executive member of the campaign, but for this event, mixing batter was his main job. We are here with the Engage campaign making pancakes, um, just trying to provide people with a little breakfast for dinner, um, currently making batter. We have gone through two full bags now, which make a lot of pancakes, so. And that bowl of batter fed a turnout of about 100 students, despite a last-minute change of location. The candidates took some time to put down their forks and talk about Engage's policy ideas, such as Smokey's Closet, an initiative to provide students the ability to rent professional attire from career services. They also promoted a hope ticker policy which would show students when their HOPE scholarship expires. Powers, Bergen, and Davis have been sharing these ideas at numerous organizational meetings on campus, but Davis, the Student Services Director candidate, noted that Pancake Night was a good time for them to just relax and get to know the students. You know, everybody loves pancakes, but two, we wanted to let people have the opportunity to meet us in person. Uh, you, know, as, you know, as candidates, you know, life can be very, very hectic. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the students at the University of Tennessee have the opportunity to meet us and you know, see us, because we're students too. And at the end of the day, uh, just because if I was elected student services director, that doesn't really make me that cool. I'm just still a student. Uh, I want people to be able, you know, feel free to come into the office and talk to me. So whether the event convinced students to vote for Engage or not, one can surely say that no one left hungry. Sophomore Kevin Brown noted that the pancakes were just as good as the policy points. They were so good that I'm just going to go get some more right now. So I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. okay, that's great. For more information about the Engage campaign, you can check out their website and their Facebook. 
And you can tune in to the Volunteer Channel's own live SGA debate on April 2nd, right before voting starts on April 3rd. For the Volunteer Channel, I'm Kelsey Kinney. And we actually have presidential candidate Christian Powers with us today in the studio. Stay tuned for an exclusive TVC interview. And after that, we've got the weekly report on UT sports and upcoming events. Don't go anywhere. Big orange is our color. Big ideas feed the fire of the volunteer. When you see 16 million colors on a computer screen, understand a Tennessee graduate helped put them there. A Tennessee graduate made it possible for you to hold a conversation with a satellite in the palm of your hand. Our ideas touch your life in ways you can't imagine. Orange is simply a color. Big orange is a way of life. The University of Tennessee. Big orange, big ideas. Rooted in excellence. For every patient, every time. Covenant Health rises to the top. In a study to determine best performing health systems, Covenant Health now ranks among the top 5% in the nation. Nationally honored for outstanding quality, Covenant hospitals and physicians provide better care, have higher patient satisfaction, and save more lives. Eight hospitals standing strong as one. Covenant Health. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. With over 1,000 likes on Facebook, the engaged candidates are making themselves known on campus. Take a look at some of them here. No, you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home Settle down, it'll all be clear Don't pay no mind to the demons, they fill you with fear The trouble in my drag you down Presidential candidate Christian Powers is taking a little time off the campaign trail to talk to us now. Christian, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much. Saw that you have a love of pancakes. I have to say I agree with you there. <laughs> so we have that, that policy Definitely. point in common, I have to there say. There we go. Um, but basically, tell us why you wanted to run for SGA president. Definitely. When did you make this decision and how did the campaign come together? Yeah, um, well, just a little background about myself and, and when I wanted to run. Um, typically, I've known, known in the past that you know, candidates decide in the summer of, or and they get to work in, during Senate uh, trying to get individuals to run. But um, this actually formulated back in the end of September and October. Um, Grant Davis and I had never met um, other than Senate, and we just started kind of talking about who who might you know fulfill those uh, you know those shoes and, and, and bring that on. And I, I was very passionate being Senate chair this year, and, and had a great opportunity seeing things pass through legislation as well as working with the current administration. So I um, you know we had this discussion and dialogue, and you know that's kind of how it, how it started and then eventually we, Laura Bergen came in the picture and we we've been there since so yeah great and so you mentioned that you were you have been serving as the Senate chair yeah. for SGA this year how has that experience working with legislation Definitely. and senators shaped how this campaign is going to work and how you think your campaign can actually make SGA effective. Definitely. Um, one of the biggest things, you know, in the last couple of years, and I, you know, I'm grateful that all campaigns that have done this, is, is not just necessarily putting out policy points. Um, you know, with legislation comes research, and it's very critical that we pass legislation that's well-researched and well-thoughtful um, thought, and, and relevant to the students versus just popping out a couple pieces of legisl legislation about cheese in, in, the, in the cafeteria. But um, So what we wanted to do is, is make sure that all, all our, camp, our executives all our executives, excuse me, um, um, were 
when we created our policy, were well researched and, and, and took time to invest time looking at student needs, going out, engaging the students, and finding the issues on campus, um, so that we, when we wrote policy, um, it would be relevant to the students. Yeah. So, what do you think are the needs of the students? What policy Definitely. points are you most looking forward to working with for SGA? Definitely. Um, well, if just if, for a background of Engage, what, what our campaign is all about is uh, communication, collaboration, and credibility. I um, mean, one of the biggest things that I want to bring to this university and bring to um, SGA this year is a, a sense of collaboration. In, in the past, um, past couple years that I've been here at UT, uh, SGA has been in the limelight, but there's so many other leaders on campus that can fulfill the duties of, of representing the students. And what I want to do is sit down with all these leaders um, in a president's uh, a, a council, not a cabinet um, um, where we would be advised, but to sit down and have discussions and dialogue about the students' needs. So if there's an issue in BCC or uh, SAA, that we can have these discussions. So when I speak with Chancellor Cheek and the provost, um, we can advocate for those things further. Um, another thing, and one other thing I'll, I'll tag on, and, and unfortunately, Laura Bergen um, would, would love to say this, but I'll go ahead and speak for it, is, is Smokey's Closet. Um, currently, there's 57% of students on need-based um, scholarship at, at UT right now. And we were very, very focused and passionate about serving students in, in the best way where um, you know uh, whatever needs they need especially finances we want to you know we want to advocate for those and so what we want to do is work with collaborate uh, with career services to, to bring something to campus where students can be professionally dressed up for their interviews or uh, for you know job um, you know just anything they need uh, to be well dressed um, something that they can have um, without having to go purchase uh, spend a couple thousand dollars on Absolutely. You speak for her quite well, yeah. I might add. <laughs> She'd be proud. She's watching this. <laughs> so as you probably know, because you've seen SGA through the years, yeah. this is a really unique year Definitely. for SGA campaigns and the election process. There are three parties. Not everyone's running with the student services director. What makes your campaign unique and stand Definitely. out from the typical norm that SGA campaigns have been in the past couple Definitely. years? Well, I'm very excited to uh, talk about this. Um, in the past, SGA is, uh, you know, when campaigns start, a lot of individuals are selected from freshman council and senate. Um, this year, we, we stepped back from that, and we, we really wanted to focus on diversity. Um, I think if you look amongst all three campaigns, I would be very, you know, confident to say I would our, our campaign is probably the most diverse on campus. Um, we, we looked at individuals that were RAs um, to, to look at the necessities of residence life. We looked at individuals in BCC, um, LG LGBTQA, the whole facet of campus we wanted to touch um, and reach out to so uh, we could hear those issues versus just coming up with uh, policy points that we thought were, were applicable to students but actually find the true needs of students. So I think that's one of the biggest things that, that, uh, that we're really excited about with this campaign is, is being, being, being diverse. So. Okay, and this, since it is a different, yeah. interesting election year, I have to pose the question, yeah. have you considered a split ticket happening with the election process? and? Have you guys talked about definitely. that possibility? Well, I think, um, you know, it's, it's been definitely been on our minds, and we've definitely had discussion about it. Um, um, but, you know, the way we're running our campaign, we're very confident um, that we're going to reach out to students in the best way. And I think, um, you know, it goes a lot with what our, what our name's about. We're not just reaching out to students or, or, or getting, uh, you know, the, the students riled up about something, but we're, we're taking the time to invest in students. And I think when students see that um, the candidates are, are taking it to another level, not just standing back off the picture, but getting in the lives and building relationships with these students, um, I'm confident that um, everything is going to work out. So Great. And your running mates, Laura yeah. and Grant, Laura for VP and then Grant for Student Definitely. Services Director. Tell our viewers a little bit about them and yeah. you know why they're qualified for these positions. Definitely. Well, Laura Bergen uh, is a business major. She's also in GLS. Um, and Grant Davis is a uh, uh, biomedical engineer. Um, or excuse me, a bioengineer, excuse me, I always mess this up. He's in the College of Agriculture with bioengineer, whatever. Um, it's, com it's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. It's complicated. But uh, uh, yeah. Um, they're they're two different they're different parts of campus. They're wonderful people. I'm I'm glad that uh, the three of us are have connected and collaborated. We're, we're not the typical poli sci majors who are politicians ready to run. Um, we're, we're spread at different types of campus, but um, they're great. You know, Laura Bergen has been in uh, freshman council, so um, as well as senate. Um, as well as a freshman council advisor, so she's seen the whole, um, you know, the whole gamut of what her job would entail. And then uh, Grant Davis, he's been in student services ever since he's been a freshman, and so you know, currently he's an assistant student services. He understands the job position. Um, so I could not uh, ask for better candidates and more qualified candidates um, on this ticket. So. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like y'all make a great team together. Definitely. 
What are some upcoming events that maybe we yeah. can go check out to learn more about the Engage campaign? Well, uh, funny you ask that. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we're going to have our uh, Engage Daiquiri night, our, our spring send-off. There will be no alcohol included. It's okay. still staying dry on campus. Our dry campus. Um, but what we want to do is we want to, you know, get everybody excited about spring break before they head off to Florida or, or, or golf shores and so forth. So um, what we're going to be doing is at 6.30 um, at the bottom of Hume's, um, Hume's basement, uh, we're going to be, be there for about 30 or 40 minutes talking to with students, um, you know, serving them daiquiris and, and, and drinks that they might, um, you know, enjoy at spring break with, with something else or just <laughs> to enjoy. And, uh, um, but yeah, we're just going to, you know, get, get to know them and, and be on a more personal level. So. Pancakes, daiquiris, Pan it all campaigns makes are where you get your Definitely. fits here at <laughs> UT for students. Okay, Christian, final Definitely. question. Yeah. I always just love to end with this note. If I were a student who didn't know anything about SJ on campus and I just kind of wandered up to you Definitely. and I said, Tell me why I should vote for you. Tell me why Engage should be the next leaders of SJ here at UT. Definitely. What would you tell me? That's a tough question. Um, one of the biggest things I think is, you know, we've seen the frustrations of students. I've been on both ends uh, my freshman and sophomore year, so I understand the frustrations of communication. Um, but, you know, I've been on the, other, the, the opposite end of the spectrum where, um, you know, I've worked hard in SGA and, and, and I've seen Laura work hard and Grant work hard. And so uh, we understand the frustrations um, and we also understand what it takes to run this, uh, this machine, if you might say. But um, so, you know, being the the most, or I would say, being very experienced in this position, um, you know, I think students will, will see. Yeah, so. tough question, Sorry, but pretty good tough. answer, I have to say. Uh, so, you. Christian, thank you so much for taking the time to be Definitely. with us at TBC and for, you know, collaborating with us on everything SGA related. Thank so, you thank so you much. so much for being yes, here. Thank you. To find out more about the Engage campaign, you can check out their website, engageut.com. And don't forget to vote on April 3rd. But that's all we have for you here at TBC News today. Have a safe and fun spring break, UT. We'll check you out after the break with our live SGA debate. Have a great weekend.